in this video I will explain how money supply is determined in an economy uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, and share my videos so <laughs> money supply in an economy uh, is the total stock of financial assets that can work as money I mean that can carry out the functions of money including uh, the medium of exchange and the means of payment two measures of money supply are mostly used throughout the economies they are narrow money supply uh, which is called M1 and broad money supply which is M2 narrow money supply consists of currency held by the non-bank public and the, the checkable deposits which is called demand deposits held by the commercial banking system thus m1 equals to uh, cp plus dd in case of nepal the demand deposits consists of the current account deposits maintained at class a class b and class c banks on the other hand, broad money consists of narrow money plus time deposits. Time deposits consists of the fixed deposits maintained at commercial banks that have some restriction for withdrawal before the maturity. That is M2 equals to M1 plus time deposits. In case of Nepal, the time deposits consist of the deposits maintained at saving accounts, call accounts, and margin accounts, and fixed deposit accounts. There are two approaches that are widely used to analyze the determinants of money supply. The first one is money multiplier approach and the second one is accounting or balanced approach. The money multiplier approach. The money multiplier approach is a theoretical approach to explain the determinant of money supply. It views total money supply in the economy as a product between the ridge of money and the money multiplier and can be expressed as money supply equals to multiplier times uh, the base money or high power money or reserve money where ms is money supply m is money multiplier and h is the reserve money which is also known as base money or high power money the reserve money includes the cash held by the non-bank public and the reserve kept in the banking system. It includes the required reserve kept at central banks, by commercial banks, any excess reserves kept by the banks either at central bank or their own vault, and other deposits kept at central bank by other institutions in the economy. That is, reserve money equals to cash with non bank public plus cash in vault of commercial bank plus reserve at central bank plus other deposits at central bank. In practice, the share of other deposits is minimal so we just ignore it. For simplicity, we can express the reserve money as reserve money equals to cash with non-bank public plus required reserve kept at central bank plus excess reserves kept by the commercial banks. Now taking the broad definition of money supply, the money multiplier theory can be expressed as money supply equals to M times H. Money supply is currency with public plus demand deposits plus time deposits equals to multiplier times and the base money or reserve money is currency with public plus required reserve plus excess reserve. So from this we can rearrange the terms as M equals to this whole expression divided by this. Uh, again we we express the required reserve as R percent R percent of total deposit in commercial banks. 
so T is total deposit as commercial banks and R is the required reserve ratio so so the total deposits includes demand deposit and time deposits so D equals to demand deposits plus time deposits and uh, we divide the numerator and denominator by demand deposit and uh, express the value of M in terms of four ratios the first ratio is a CP divided by the band deposit which is called currency holding ratio and denoted by this a small letter C uh, time deposit to demand deposit ratio is called time deposit ratio and denoted by small letter 3 uh, this required reserve ratio R required reserve ratio R is denoted by small r and uh, the excess reserve to demand deposit ratio is denoted by small e and it's called excess reserve ratio so what this uh, shows that the value of multiplier depends on these four ratios so these are called behavioral ratios because they uh, they reflect the behaviors of public commercial bank and central bank and the economy for example the cash deposit ratio and time deposit ratio shows the behavior of the public towards holding cash uh, the required reserve ratio shows the behavior of the central bank and the excess reserve ratio shows the behavior of commercial bank the money multiplier theory says that if the money multiplier is a predictable and a stable function of these ratios, money supply can be managed by introducing discretionary changes in the reserve money by the central bank. So the multiplier approach uh, can be expressed as expressed in growth form. So for this, we take log on both sides, and this uh, this changes the equation in growth form growth of money supply equals to growth of multiplier plus growth of base money or reserve money so given the relationship there are two immediate determinants of money supply one is money multiplier and the other is reserve money the money multiplier depends on four ratios c t r and e ratio and these are called approximate determinants of money supply. All the ratio have inverse relationship with the money multiplier and S of the money supply. This means uh, if uh, if any of the ratio increases, the multiplier will go down and the money supply will reduce. The four ratios further depends on a lot of factors. For example, the C ratio depends on the income level of the economy, interest rate on fixed deposit, confidence in banking system, payment system, access to financial services, illegal activities, size of illegal activities, and the, the risk of bank crisis. So these all factors may change the C ratio and consequently the value of multiplier. On the other hand, on the other hand, the the R ratio depends on the behavior of the central bank. T ratio depends on income level, interest rate, time deposits, and E ratio depends on bank rate, deposit variability in the banking system, and availability of funds at the interbank market. So these last mentioned factors like income, interest rate, etc. are called the ultimate determinants of money supply in the economy. Since money supply depends on the variables like income and interest rate, it is said to be partly endogenous variable. So in money multiplier approach, the second component, the second important component is the reserve money which can be expressed as the cash hold by non-bank public plus a required reserve at central bank plus excess reserve care by commercial banks. So this is the user side definition of reserve money. 
From the sources side, reserve money can be calculated from the balance sheet of the monetary authority as reserve money equal to net foreign asset of the monetary authority plus net domestic asset of the monetary authority. A typical balance sheet of the central bank looks like mm, on the asset side there will there will be net foreign asset plus domestic financial assets and other assets. On the liability side, there will be monetary liability and non-monetary liability. By rearranging the terms, we get monetary liability equals to net foreign asset plus domestic financial assets plus other assets minus non-monetary liability. So if we net out these three terms, this gives us net domestic assets. So the monetary liability is the sum of NFA plus NDA, net foreign asset plus net domestic assets. This monetary liability is called reserve money. Thus, reserve money is the sum total of NFA and NDA in an economy. So the NFA, net foreign asset, is a summary result of the net transactions of the country with the rest of the world. It is defined as NFA equals to foreign assets minus foreign liabilities. Foreign assets include gold, uh, special drawing rights, IMF reserve position, and foreign accents. Whereas domestic financial assets include the claim of monetary authority on the government, the claim of monetary authority on the government enterprises, uh, claims on governmental non financial institutions, claims in commercial banks, and claims on private sector. So these all are the credits credits lent out lent out by the central bank or monetary authority. Thus, an increase in need for an asset and or domestic financial asset will increase reserve money which in turn raises the money supply. NFA increases from the favorable balance of payment position of the country which can come through a rise in exports, inflow of remittances or foreign investment. NDA increases when credit from the central bank to government, government enterprises and commercial banks increase. Thus, increasing NFA and or NDA will increase reserve money which in turn raises the money supply. NFA increases from the balance of payment position and remittance and rise in exports. So let us turn to the case of Nepal. In case of Nepal, the value of multiplier is more or less stable around 3.5. So it is the growth in reserve money that has caused an increase in money supply. During the last five years, the broad money multiplier has increased by mere 2.4% on average, whereas the reserve money has increased by 15.7% as well as the broad money supply growth is around 80.1%. Inside the reserve money, net foreign assets has increased by 20% while the net domestic assets has decreased. This shows that NFA or net foreign assets is the dominant determinant of money supply in Nepal's context. So in balance sheet approach, money supply can be measured from the aggregated balance sheet of the banking system which includes the balance sheet of central bank. Money supply can be expressed sum of net foreign asset of the banking system and the net domestic assets of the banking system. The net foreign asset includes net holding of gold, reserve fund, SDR holding and foreign exchange reserve of the bank system. Whereas net domestic assets includes net claims on government, claims on non-financial government enterprises, claims on private sector and other items. Thus, money supply increases or falls according as the NFA or NDA of the banking system increases or falls. Thus, the two determinants of the money supply under this approach are NDA and NFA of the banking system.
In case of Nepal, during the past five years, the share of NFA in broad money supply is 39.1% and the share of NDA is 60.9%. This shows the relative importance of net domestic assets in money supply. So, so the share of net domestic assets uh, is large here due to the uh, due to the large amount of credit availed by the banking system to private sector. So this analysis shows that money supply is not purely an exogenous variable as assumed in some economic analysis. Neither is complete policy variable. There are some autonomous sources of money supply which the central bank cannot influence through its discretionary action. One of them is the net foreign asset in the context of Nepal. Central bank thus cannot control the money supply completely. It depends on the behavior of the public and the commercial banks too. In this sense, money supply is said to be an endogenous as well as exogenous variable. So thank you for watching this video and again please subscribe to my channel for watching more videos on economics and please share this video.